Welcome to another edition of The Trading Bell. This week on the program, we'll be speaking to the Capital Markets Authority, Chief Executive Officer Paul Mudaura. But first, let's take a quick look at Mudaura's profile. Mr. Mudaura is a member of the board of the International Organization of Securities Commission and the vice chairman of the Africa and Middle East Regional Committee of IOSCO. Paul has held the positions of Head of Legal Framework, Head of Enforcement and Director, Regulatory Policy and Strategy at the Capital Markets Authority. He sits on the boards of the Insurance and Pensions Regulator, as well as the Vision 2030 Delivery Board. Well, let's now get into that conversation with Paul Mudaura. Many thanks for joining us, sir. No, pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, this is an interesting week as we've seen uh, the Building Af Africa Financial Markets Seminar happening in Nairobi, a number of chief executive officers in town. Perhaps let's just pick it up from what are your sentiments from the opening session? What do you make of the conference? I think first and foremost that we had the session opened by the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency William Ruto, sends a very significant and resounding message of the level of support that the government of Kenya has in making sure that the capital markets will be able to play the critical role in supporting economic development. Mm -hmm. When you look at the, the fact of the hosting of the uh, Building African Financial Market Seminar in Nairobi at this time, I think it's very telling that only four years ago, the NSC was hosting the African Securities Exchanges Association annual conference. Yes. And now they're hosting this event, which really reiterates the important position that Kenya plays on the continent in terms of making sure, building the visibility of capital markets and their role in business enterprise, economic development, infrastructure financing, mm -hmm. and the broad spectrum of, of other areas. All right. And uh, you've raised a very important point that uh, there's a a lot of interest and excitement in Africa. The, for instance, the president is in London, and uh, he was actually at the London Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And of course, coming back home to Africa, we've seen there's been a lot of um, developments around countries trying to raise capital through the capital markets. Just talk to us about the trends we are seeing, not only in Kenya, but even in the region, as well as in West Africa. Oh, looking, looking at the trends, and you know, Kenya, in the last month and a half, raised its second eurobond, which was very significantly oversubscribed. But that is actually only one of a number of other eurobond issues we've seen across the continent in, as you mentioned, West Africa and Central and Southern Africa. Yes. Which tells us there's a very big opportunity right now with the t kind of low interest rates we're seeing in the most developed economies in the US, Europe, Japan. There is a very significant push by large pools of capital to find what they call yield, yes. higher returns. Yes. And that really presents a, a prime opportunity for African capital markets to raise their visibility, but also raise their standards mm -hmm. to ensure that those larger fund flows actually able to come into their markets, uh, that there is an appropriate level of uh, satisfaction with trading, settlement systems, and also that there's confidence in the corporate governance environment, transparency, and ease of access to information. All right. And uh, Paul, you've been very uh, instrumental when it comes to driving a number of products in the Kenyan market. For instance, we've seen uh, the Emma Kiba. We did see uh, there's still the push to have the derivatives market. Mm -hmm. Perhaps just give us an update on uh, Emma Kiba. And of course, uh, the deputy president did not mince his words mm -hmm. when he talked about um, he needs to see a lot more uh, pushing on this product. Mm -hmm. From where you sit, what needs to change to move uptake to another level? I think first and foremost, it is awareness that for a very long time, the gross majority of our population, including business people, tend to see the capital markets as the market for those other people, for those big companies, for those foreigners, not for us Kenyans. And there's a very big effort we need to put in in making sure there's an education on what scope of services and opportunities the capital markets actually offer. Mm -hmm. I think what's also critical is that how much the markets have changed in the last 10 years in terms of the scope of available products, um, the overalls, 
safety and security environment in terms of will your money be safe if you put it in, the quality of returns you're able to receive has fundamentally changed. You can now access real estate, not through going and buying a plot, going to buy a real estate investment trust. Mm -hmm. um, you have the opportunity to, uh, instead of buying a single, uh, a single stock, you can invest in collective investment schemes that are pooling these investments for you and that are subjected to professional management sure. to improve the likelihood of a, a, a strong return. So that there are a lot of opportunities, but once we do the education, we also need to continue on the journey we're already on. Mm -hmm. We're about uh, four years into the implementation of the Capital Markets 10-year Master Plan, which was developed with all our industry stakeholders to make sure we have a very clear vision of where we want to take the capital markets in Kenya. And there have been very significant um, deliverables. And to help people understand what those are, as the authority, we've actually, in the beginning of this year, launched an online portal that allows any individual to log on and actually track where exactly we are on the implementation of the master plan and the expected imp uh, implications of some of these achievements. All right. So do you feel uh, Emma Kiba could have done much better? I think with all investments, timing is key. That when you look at the first Makiba issuance, which was in March, yes. it was massively oversubscribed. Now, the second issuance was very close to the electioneering period, and then that electioneering period extended. Yes. So timing is everything in terms of people's willingness and confidence in making long-term investments. Mm -hmm. But with the very positive trend we're already seeing in the market, our Market capitalization is at an all-time high, 2.8 trillion shillings. You know, sometimes we don't discuss these issues. Yeah. We, we imagine that uh, big markets are elsewhere. Um, and when you look at some of the trends on our market indices, they're very, we're right now about the, the fourth in terms of emerging markets, capital market growth in terms of our indices. Mm -hmm. So it's a very positive time to come into the markets uh, because of the challenging times the markets have gone through between 2015 and end of 2016, 2017, there's actually a very significant opportunity for upside. Yeah. Because many of the counters are comparatively uh, undervalued. So this is an excellent time for mm -hmm. more participants to come into the market and for us to really once again uh, enforce to Kenyans that there's a huge opportunity for wealth creation through capital markets investing. All right. And uh, of course, Paul, you know very many Kenyans sometimes can be skeptics when it comes to believing in products in the market. Mm -hmm. What have you done towards building confidence in the market, as well as uh, taking action on various uh, players who do not play to the games of the market? Oh, certainly. That we, as a regulator, have a dual mandate. We must regulate that is create an environment of safety, orderliness, and efficiency in the market. But we also must develop it uh, to make sure that uh, the markets continue to evolve and meet the funding needs of our growing economy. Now, in that sense, we have made very significant strides in strengthening the regulatory framework that deals with uh, the capital markets intermediary most Kenyans know, a stockbroker and an investment bank, mm -hmm. that first line. Uh, we have significantly strengthened their capital requirements, their corporate governance requirements, and they're all in a much stronger position than they've been in very many years. Uh, in terms of corporate governance, we've introduced a new code of corporate governance, and importantly also introduced tools that can help institutional investors who, you know, it, you may be an insurance company, but by virtue of your pooled investment, you own three, four, five, seven percent of a company to have a more active voice in the quality of governance in these companies. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we must enforce mm -hmm. that where we see breaches of the law, we need as much as possible and subject, of course, to constitutional uh, due process, yes. make sure actions are brought. But we also continue now to work with our judiciary that we have noted that where actions are being brought uh, for sometimes questionable grounds, injunctions are being granted or orders are being set aside where ultimately the court reverses that when mm -hmm. they realize they were slightly misled. Yeah. So we're, we're rolling out a new program of support with the Judicial Training Institute to make sure also judges and judicial officers have a better understanding of capital markets law mm -hmm. to allow them to ensure that they'll be 
fair and timely administration of justice. All right. Well, that's a very big leap, uh, Paul. Just walk us through uh, what are your timelines around this uh, program and uh, eventually what is the end game? No. The end game, I would say, as an, as an industry, we gave ourselves in November 2014 a 10-year window of all that we needed to do to make sure that Nairobi emerges as the heart of Africa capital markets financing. Now, in that regard, we foresee that you will start seeing increasing amounts of national funding, both at national level and county level, being raised through the capital markets. We'll see uh, Nairobi being able to be recognized as a global financial center in terms of the quality of our products, the quality of our laws, the quality of our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We will see a much broader spectrum of products being available to be traded so that it is not, uh, if you want to go public, you must do an IPO. There are other ways for you to raise capital sure. and to make sure that there's a broader understanding of what those opportunities are, mm -hmm. as well as what the risk management tools are All through right. derivative products or the introduction of commodities exchanges. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we will make sure that we are able to position Kenya favorably in terms of market, global indices that track performance of capital markets, be that the Morgan Stanley Capital Index, the, the now the, the Barclays uh, Bond Index, yeah. a number of other products to make sure that when both domestic and international investors look at Kenya, they'll have a very clear picture of the quality and depth of our markets. All right. And uh, as we come to the tail end of our conversation, Paul, of course, uh, it's still a big issue out there in the market when we see um, market failure, especially from companies that had a lot of promise. For instance, we're seeing what's happening with Uchumi and, uh, of course, uh, a few others. Mm -hmm. From where you sit, um, do you feel the penalties currently set out are sufficient? Is there still a headroom towards uh, addressing this in a different way? And if you could also talk to us about the soundness report of the capital markets. Now, when you look at it, very often when we think of sanction, we think of the size of the penalty. But I think we need to start shifting to start looking at the effectiveness and the impact of those penalties. Now, one of those <coughs> issues is as a regulator, we must be very conscious that when you're dealing with listed companies, the ultimate, uh, the person who holds the biggest stick is the shareholder of that company because they determine who their board is going to be, sure. how that board is going to be compensated, mm -hmm. and how they're going to be held accountable for performance. Now, what the authority is doing is making sure that investor has all the information they need to make that decision. So there needs to be a step in individuals and institutions taking much more responsibility for the protection of their own interests. And that's where we are working very aggressively around investor education to make sure that people can protect themselves while we are also trying to protect them. Sure. In addition to that, we are engaging institutional investors to make sure that they are going to have a much louder voice. Many individual investors will not be in a position to assess or challenge strategy being taken by a company. But a large institutional investor that is diversified in its holdings can start raising fundamental questions to a board about the strategic direction you're taking, why its implications for the long-term sustainability of this company, and push for timely change. One of the challenges we have is we often wait till the strategy has failed. Yeah. Then we go, OK, now Try what do we do? Yeah. But the focus needs to be much more proactivity to ensure that we are adjusting strategy mm -hmm. to ensure long-term sustainability. All right. Many thanks for your insights, Paul. Asante san. Appreciate your coming. Thank you. Well, that is Paul Mudaura, the Chief Executive Officer for the Capital Markets Authority, talking to us on this edition of Trading Bell. We did see during the week um, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, low volumes on the market.